So I uh, I like to, to remind him, I know you have heard me already say it, that on Sunday we celebrate especially the the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? The, the reason why for us the week starts on the Sunday. And what is the weekend for the others for us is the beginning of the week, not the end of the week. And we start because it's a new life that is given to every one of us because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I said it already and I said it again. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, our faith is vain. And especially Jesus today in the gospel is uh, teaching us about faith. So Jesus is coming from uh, Judea to, to from Galilee to Judea. From the Yeah, so Jesus is moving, he's going through the different regions and already his reputation uh, were, were going through. And there is this man, in Latin he said Regulus. It means he's someone who is from a royal origin or is at the service of uh, the, the king. So he said he's from the family of the king or at his service. But anyway, it's uh, uh, related to, to the king or to a kingdom. And therefore, it's someone quite important coming to, to Jesus and coming to implore Jesus about his son. So, of course, well, when you see the picture already, you can have a, a lot of uh, memory from the Bible itself. Maybe from Abraham with his son. And me from God the Father himself and his son. And the Father interceding, the Father praying or offering his son. And he came to Jesus to pray him, to ask him to come to his house, to visit him, in order to, to save his son. And all that is about faith. Our faith has to be transformative, has to be uh, not just that we, we believe to something, to someone telling us some, something, what we use every day. Right? When you, you went to school, you had to believe your, your teacher who told you, sp spoke about, uh, let's say, to, about America or Africa, and you've never been there. But you believe the teacher was telling you about that. It's a kind of thing. But this case is not changing too much. It's just an information. But the faith that we have, the, the theological virtue of faith, the gift of God, is not just an information. It's something that transforms us. And was given with the baptism. And when the, the, the parents present a child for baptism, the first question that is asked is, what do you want for this child to be baptized? What is giving baptism, life eternal, and faith? So he comes to Jesus. And, and Jesus started to tell him, if you don't see a sign or a miracle, you won't believe. Well, it's not very nice for Jesus. Because this man is very, uh, I don't know, for those who have children, when your children are sick, and you, you go to help your, your, your child, and the doctor will uh, start to, to joke with you or to, to rebuke you a little bit. It's not very nice. Jesus, instead of telling, okay, I will uh, cure you, your son, I came to, to save you, well, why do I, are you asking for a sign? You, you cannot believe without a sign. So what, what is happening right now in the heart of this father, who normally is a kind of a respected person, and he comes, he's humiliating himself somehow in front of Jesus, who is from a very low origin, coming from a, a small village in the north of Palestine, of the, the Holy Land, son of a carpenter. And he comes and he there, he humiliates himself in front of him. And Jesus seems, seems to rebuke him and to question him about his faith. But when you think exactly about what happens, he exactly came to Jesus because he believed that Jesus can do something for us. But maybe now Jesus wants him to go further in his faith. And 
that's why sometimes it seems that the Lord is hard with us as we try to be faithful already. We believe in Him. And we see other people who don't practice the faith and they seem to have not so much hardship in their life. And it is because God, exactly because we have faith already, because we try to live according to this faith, we practice the faith, then God is uh, telling us how to go further, how to go deeper, how to, to be more and more transformed by this faith in order to become more like Him. We are already created at this image and likeness, but now we are recreated, we are saved in the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. And it is uh, a real newness that Jesus is bringing to the world, to the Jews. So He wants the Father to go deeper. Not that He had to, to believe in Jesus as a prophet, as someone even able to do miracles, but to believe in Jesus as God Himself. You see, here that there is a, a real gap. I don't know exactly the details about the Ecclesia in Christo, but I've heard that they are not really Christian, but they speak about Jesus. But maybe the lack of this, this uh, belief, this faith in Jesus Christ, real man and real God. And this is what we are learning today in this gospel. And that what we have really to, to prefine in us, that maybe we believe, but still in a religious level. Can be still just in a vague God, but not enough Christian. Not enough also believing that it has to change something in my life. A call to conversion, not only to, to avoid what is bad, but to, to do what is good, and more than that, to, to be holy. We are all supposed to be saints, or on the making, and actively. We, we are not saints by, by accident. We are saying because we answer the call of God. So Jesus, uh, the, the, the man, accept the, the, the remark of Jesus, the notice of Jesus, and he told, now he is calling him Domine, Lord. Now he recognizes already in Jesus something more. First, he was just asking Jesus maybe as a prophet, as a, a man that is favored by God, and now he's, he's calling him already Lord. Come to my house before my son dies. No, it's not just about to, to make his son more comfortable. It's really a question of life and death. And so Jesus can see already his progress in faith. So he's sending him back and saying, Go. And you, your son is alive. And it is written, and the, the man believed at the word of Jesus. And he went away. So you see, a second step that he is uh, taking. Now he is obeying to Jesus. No? That the faith is not just an information, it's not just this hope that God can do something, that is to recognize it's someone, which is Jesus Christ here, that he is God, and now it's to obey this word of Jesus. He's making, he's doing something in our life. So he believed and he went away. And he was on his way when his servant went and told him that now his son is alive, he's safe. And because he wants to go deeper in faith, he's asking them, when my son got better? And he said at the seventh hour. And he remembers exactly at that moment that Jesus told him, your son is living. And you see as a consequence, more and more this uh, faith penetrated in his life. He, uh, he believed and then all his house with him. And that's how I made this first uh, parallel with Abraham. That Abraham, Abraham, he had to do an act of faith personally first. He had to leave his country with all his family. But so far, the, the others, they were not necessarily believing. But then the more he entered into faith, the more it was all his heart was about to, to believe. So you see, the faith, uh, the opposite of what the modern time or postmodern, because now we are already in the postmodernity, 
uh, is not just something individual. The faith is also uh, our concern to all of us as a community, as a family, as the same body. And that's why also this necessity for us, for the community, to come together at least once a week on the Sunday, to celebrate the Lord, to, to, to come and to receive even more in order that when during the week we are all separated, going to, to your business, to your school, to your activities, we spread out all these light that you have received during the, the Sunday Mass, all this love that you receive in the communion, and because we are very limited, we have to come again, uh, like a cycle. Uh, and we know, like the, the manna that was given every day, that we never miss it. But we have to come to receive it. So let us ask on this Sunday that we can, as we have already faith, but that we, our faith can be purified, can be deepened, in order to transform more and more all our activities, all our relationships, all uh, our capacities, our memory, our imagination, our will, our intelligence. Because it is how it is to, to please God, to live in harmony, in unity, in real communion with Him. It's not just by behaving, it's much more than that. Jesus wants us to be now His presence to the world. He is invisible, but He's really present in us here in this chapel, in our heart, and then he sent us to, to the world to be his presence for those that we encounter. So let us pray for one another to be sent, like we said at the end of the Mass, and ite, ite, besides, go, the, the, the Mass is indeed the, the celebrity. Now you can go and spread the word, spread the love. But what you have to do, otherwise it will be spoiled. And it is a question of life and death. For all that, though that God is entrusting it like a father for his son, like a, a mother for a child.